Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to make a third person platformer in Unity and welcome to episode 12. So this time we are going to take a look at stopping our player when we actually complete the level in a kind of cool manner and we'll also start looking at pausing the game. So let's start off with stopping Unity Chan from moving around when we complete the level. So if we zoom in and go to her, we can see that surrounding her is her, well, collider. That's all it is really. It stops her from colliding into objects. Now, one way I like to actually stop movement but still give slight control just to give it something a little bit unique is to theoretically add cubes around them to prevent movement but not prevent whole movement. So let's start by adding in some cubes to her. So right click and create 3D object cube. And let's put it into place about there and let's make it thinner than what it is. So on the Z, let's change this to 0.1 and move it to there. Let's just check that it is, yep, that's fine. So we just need to move it out ever so slightly to about there. And then hold control, press D, let's duplicate move it behind and we just need to move it in closer just to kind of block her in as it were so you can take as much time as you need with this you probably shouldn't do as quickly as what I'm doing it but I'm just showing you the way to do it uh, hold control press D uh, rotate 90 let's bring this into place <clears throat> about there maybe and once again hold control press D bring it to about there and we should see Surrounded, perfect. So if we press play now, it'll look a little bit silly, right? So if, for example, if we take those four cubes and detach them from Unity Chan, press play, it prevents her from moving further than what we allow her to. So theoretically, what we could do is we could have these cubes permanently attached to her, and when we complete the level, activate them. Now, what you're thinking is, yes, I know we activate them, but they're still going to be attached to her. So we can actually remove them from being attached. So at all times, they follow her around unactivated, but then we activate them and take them out of her. Stops her moving completely. So what I'll do is I will add in another game object. Create empty. F2, let's rename um, locker, let's call it. Something real simple. And then let's add those cubes straight into there and turn off their mesh renderer and then turn off blocker. So now she has free movement back again. Perfect. So the next thing to do would be to head to the finish game trigger, which is right there and open up finish level. Now, when this is opened, what we'll do is we'll add in an extra variable. So public game object and we'll have this as level blocker semicolon so on void trigger enter we just need to set that active so level blocker dot set active true and then what we can do is we can actually use some code that we've used before and if you remember when we had our platform uh, working we use this transform parent equals null so we can literally copy that head to our level finish and then put level locker dot transform dot parent equals null and save so what that will do is detach blocker and put it as a main object in the hierarchy meaning that unity chan is no longer tied to that object so she can't move so on the uh, finish game trigger, we just need to set that in there. Easy. So blocker over there, press play, and let's check out Unity and her inability to move. So hopefully this should work nicely. Perfect. So she can't go anywhere else. Now then, uh, think what we're going to do is because there's many different ways that we can tackle where we go with this game and I did say we're going to work on pausing the game 
Um, the reason I've just kind of stopped myself there is because I did notice that we didn't turn off the box collider of the finished level um, when we finished. So um, we'll probably work at it at a later date, but it's not too important for now because we intend to eventually have a sequence of events by where everything is disabled in this level, we save our score, and then move to the next level. So we'll be doing sequencing, um, maybe not next tutorial, tutorial after that one maybe. Uh, so first, let's get our pausing working. Now, to pause a game, generally you press the escape button. Uh, in saying that, if we go to edit and go to project settings and input, click the little arrow next to axis, and you can see these are all the buttons which are currently programmed into Unity. It's by default. And what we want is this one at the bottom, cancel. You can see the name is cancel, the positive button is escape. What that means is that when we press escape, the name cancel is sent into Unity basically. And we can use that function to actually pause the game. So we can get the script to recognize when we're pressing that button. So if we go to create C sharp script and go pause game, what we can do is we can set a couple of variables to allow us to check if it's paused and then to basically pause the player. So if we go to Unity Chan herself, what we could do is basically, we'll, we'll get the general function going first off. So let's start uh, by getting rid of the annotations and void start, we don't need it. We'll add in just one variable for now, which is public bool, so that a bool is true or false. So we can say, are we paused true, are we paused false? And we'll just put game, paused by default we'll make it false because it's not paused by default and then in void update what we need to do is check if we're pressing the cancel button which is the escape button so we can go if input dot get button down and in brackets and quotes cancel make sure a capital c there open curly bracket after that we need to check if game paused is equal to false. So if, in brackets, game paused equals false, then open curly bracket. And what we do is we modify the time scale. So time dot time scale equals zero, semicolon. The idea of time scale is Unity is always running in a time scale of one, that's real time. If we were to set it to zero, it would freeze everything. If we were to set it to two, it would go double fast. If we were to set it to 0 0.5, it would go half the speed. So after we've set that to zero, we set game paused equal to true, semicolon. And just for good measure, what we'll do is we'll put cursor dot visible equals true, semicolon. After that, after we've uh, checked if it's false, we need to check if it's true, because if we press cancel, it's either true or false. So we need to do an else statement to say, if it's true, uh, sorry, if it's false, then do this, otherwise do the following. And we basically do the inverse of what we've just done. So we put cursor dot visible equals false, semicolon, game paused, equals true, uh, sorry, false, because we've unpaused, apologies, and time dot time scale equals one, semicolon, and save that script. So that script needs to be running all the time to monitor what button we're pressing and if we're pressing the button to pause. So if we go to game object, create empty, F2, and we'll have pause object, and now let's drag and drop that onto there and press play. So as always, we can do that and then we can pause. So you'll notice that we can't actually do anything. We can't move Unity Chan. These do still turn around and the ledge has paused. So a couple of things we want to do here. Uh, we'll stop the music from playing first off. So we'll go public, audio, source, and we'll call it level music semicolon 
So if it's paused, let's add that to it. Level music dot uh, pause. Open close bracket, semicolon. So then obviously we need to play it again when we unpause. Level music dot unpause. Right there in the list. Semicolon. Oops. Open close bracket there, my apologies. And let's save the script. Next thing we need to do is not actually in the pause script. If we go to our gem rotate, you can see we have here the rotation space world. So we've got all of that. Now what we need to do is use the time dot time scale as the multiplier. So in rotate speed, we put here multiply time dot time scale and save. So if you remember, I said time dot time scale default is one. So rotate speed times one will always be the same. If we were to multiply it by zero, anything you multiply by zero is zero. So it would stop the rotation right here. So let's uh, head back to Unity. Uh, we did save the other script, didn't we? Yes, we did. Uh, head back to Unity, pause object, and we just need to add in that level music, which is on the main camera, I believe. And it is level audio. So drag and drop. Now let's press play and check this all out. So there we go. The game has literally frozen. And now we can unpause. Perfect. And that is generally how you can pause any game in Unity. It's, it, it is quite simple. There's not a lot to it. Uh, but obviously, pausing usually brings up a pause menu. So by f well, I'm going to finish this one just by bringing up a uh, quick bit of UI. And we'll bring up a panel. And in the next episode, we're going to use this panel to be the actual pause menu. So we're going to do some cool stuff there. Um, I'm going to use this as centered. And width, let's have it as 300. Height, let's have it as 400. So this will be our pause menu. So right click, rename, pause menu. And let's just add in some UI there just to say paused. So UI, text, and paused. Let's have it at the top. Uh, let's have a aligned center, bigger font, maybe 26. And yeah, let's use our other font there. Expand it a little bit to the top. And let's also have it white. So I am going to then turn off pause menu. And then in the script, pause game, let's add in, oops, not in caps, public game object pause menu semicolon and then if we uh, press the pause button to pause it pause menu dot set active true semicolon and then obviously you've got it you do the inverse of that when we unpause so pause menu dot set active false semicolon save Let's quickly test this out to make sure it works. So let's go down, pause object, drag and drop pause menu, press play, and let's have a look. Perfect. So this will be our pause menu, and it disappears when we unpause. So next episode, what we're going to look at is let's add some sound effects to that so we can get maybe a beep or something when we press the uh, pause button. Uh, we'll also actually create the pause menu, so we'll have maybe the score displayed on there, um, a resume button, a quit button, main menu, but you know, that kind of stuff that you would expect to see on a pause button. And we'll also look at a fade screen. So, guys, until that next episode, thank you very much for watching.